Hello and welcome. I'm Florian, you're on the Productivity Exchange, and today we're looking at how you can pull Jira data directly into your spreadsheet using the Jira add-in. Let's do it. Alright, so the first thing you'll need to do is log into Jira. It doesn't matter where you are in Jira, you should always have these options along the top. You'll want to click Filters, Advanced Issue Search, and then let that load. Now there are two ways to get data out of Jira. There's the export, and you can get that as XML data or Word data, or even as a CSV. You can either export it with all fields, so that'll be all of the fields on the issue, regardless of the ones that are showing in this column view here at the moment, or you can select current fields, which will then download only the ones that you have set up on your search here. Unfortunately, this export functionality limits the number of results that you get to a thousand. So if you have a project that has over a thousand Jira issues, then this is not going to work for you, or you'll have to do it in batches. The second way to export is open in Microsoft Excel. And what this will do is it'll download a small file. You may need to give your browser permission to open pop-ups, and then you'll be presented with this dialog box. Now, you need to select whether or not you're using Excel on desktop or Excel online. I'll be using Excel on desktop, so I will select that. This will start a download. Once the download is complete, open the downloaded file, and you'll be presented with this screen. It'll ask you whether or not to trust this add-in. To use it, you'll need to trust it, so we will click Trust. Usually it doesn't do this. It's just having a bit of trouble today, but I have the add-in, so what I'm going to do is open a new workbook and close this one. Now that I've opened my workbook, I just need to click on the Get Jira Data add-in. This will load, and you'll be required to log in. Because I've done this previously, it's not asked me to. Just follow those steps, check the permissions, and allow it. Once you get to the screen, you will notice that you've got multiple tabs along the top here, and then you have various options in here. I'm just going to enlarge this somewhat so it's a little bit nicer to look at, and I'm going to get rid of this message. There are two import types, JQL query and filter. JQL query quite simply lets you type in a JQL query. So like this. And you'll also notice that there's an autocomplete feature, which is quite useful if you're not quite sure what the uh, field name is or what the label is that you're looking for. So if I were to change that to NZ like this, I can see NZL there. If I just have it blank, it should give me all of the possible options that I can scroll through like this as well and then just select. The other import type is filter. So if you have a saved filter, you can use that. And the last thing you can do is set the maximum number of rows. This is incredibly useful if you've got a large project and you want to do it in one step rather than multiple. So if you've got over 5,000 items in this case, you can type in say 10,000 and hopefully your count will be lower than that and then it will work in one step. Equally, if you've got more than 10,000, you can set that to a larger number. And then lastly, all you'll need to do is click Get Data Now. Notice that this doesn't return all of the fields for the issues. You can change what fields are presented using the Fields tab. Here you can see issue type, key, summary, assignee, etc. all match the headings that I have across the page here. If I hit Edit, I can then deselect the ones that I don't want and select the ones that I do want. So I'll select labels and I'll also search for a custom field that I have called custom short text. There we are. And I can just select that there. If I save that and get data now, you'll notice that it will ask whether to replace the current sheet. That's necessary in order to update the data. So I'll just click continue and I can see it's removed the columns that I didn't want and added in the ones that I did, namely labels and custom short text. And lastly, you can set the add-in to run either every time you open the workbook or whenever you hit the refresh button. This can be incredibly useful if you've got a second sheet where you have, say, a count of the number of issues that it's returning, as well as what status things are in. This is a neat way to track custom statistics in a Jira project that might be harder to do using the Jira dashboard. So to wrap up, in order to get the Jira add-in, what you need to do is be in Jira, go to Filters, Advanced Issue Search, then click on Open in Microsoft Excel, download the file, open the file, 
make sure that this little icon appears on the top ribbon. When that icon is there, you might not have it load. So what I would suggest is close that window, open a new blank spreadsheet, and then go through the steps from there. You'll need to provide permission for the add-in to access your Jira data, and you'll need to set up either a filter or a JQL query and the fields that you want to return. And then you're done. My next video will be on how to make and save filters and share them with other people and customize what you're seeing here. And that will be followed by another video on how to use the more advanced JQL search strings here. Once we've covered all that, I'll be creating a video on how to make custom dashboards for your projects. If you found this video useful, please like it and share it with somebody else who might find it useful. If you're interested in the upcoming Jira videos, then subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss them. And I'll see you in the next video.